Okay, this is... Uh, let me see. Okay, we're gonna just go in... Big screen mode! Here we go! Okay! Okay. So let's see! Hi guys, it's Em. Today I'm going to be doing a African land snail care video. And it's going to be featuring, of course, Shrek, who's enjoying a little bath at the back there. Let me bring you forward, Shrek, and come and say hi to everybody. See? He's just marinating in here. Don't worry, I'm not planning on eating him. Some people do eat African land snails, but I'm not going to eat him. This video... So, first of all, I don't know um, why... She is um, putting her pet snail that deep in water because the uh, hole where they breathe out is under the shell. So she's covered, she covered her animal totally under water, which I would not um, recommend because of course they can survive a long time under water. Um, some even say up to 24 hours or something, but they can drown, you know? So this is, um, <laughs> how long are we in? 29 seconds, and that is not the right care. You should handle your snail, um, because they need to breathe. They need to breathe. They have lungs, my friends. They need to breathe. So please don't do that. Don't cover your snail uh, all the way up to the sh shell with water. That could be dangerous. Okay, let's see what's next. It has been really highly requested, so I really hope that you enjoy it. If you haven't already, remember to hit that subscribe button down below, become part of the Creature Crew, and also hit that notification bell so you can keep up to date with all of my different videos. For the sake of argument, I do understand that snails are hermaphrodites. They have both male and female reproductive organs, but I just like to call Shrek a he. So for the sake of argument, he is a he for today. Did I just assume his gender? And really quickly, I'd like to thank Fran from the Etsy shop Birch Please for sending okay. me this gorgeous little We're gonna Shrek scroll snail. A little skin. If you're moving your snails quickly, so that so a lot of people ask me, um, actually always, how I know when my snail is sick. Like, how do I know if she's sick? So this snail right here is not feeling good. And how uh, how I can see that is her body is is not on the shell anymore on this. Uh, excuse me, I don't know the right terms for the snail business in English. <laughs> I try my best, and she she's she's not connected to the to the beginning here of the shell anymore. So so that snail doesn't feel good at all. She doesn't feel good at all. So this snail is sick, either sick or um, or the right. It's not the right temperature in uh, in their enclosure or something like that. This snail is basic is is definitely not feeling good. Definitely not feeling good. That you can clean their enclosure. Just gently pick them up by their shell. If you're picking them up to handle them for a prolonged period of time, I would suggest washing a piece of food such as lettuce, so that you can safely hold your snail and ensure that you're not hurting their skin. Just bear in mind that the room temperature may be significantly different to the inside of the enclosure, so don't let your snails get too hot or too cold. With, you have to wash your hands with soap, so that the so that the salt on the skin, your sweat goes away but i think that's enough you don't need this lettuce or some food to cover up your skin i mean it, you just wash your hands and you keep them wet when you handle them and then you're good you don't need this lettuce that, that's and anyhow you see here it doesn't make it, there is no purpose to have that because she anyhow holds it with her hands because they move around you know oh there's one eye and where's your other eye there it is! They can be great to teach kids about responsibility. They're not going to break the bank with regards to food or veterinary care. And they're very easy to look after. Also, the setup costs are quite minimal. So, let's get started. The first thing you're going to need before bringing home your snail is an enclosure. So, setup costs are are minimal? I, I cannot agree because you have a... It really is up to you to decide what kind of style you want. So, over here, this kind of tank, it's sort of like a converted aquarium. 
terrarium and I find this works really well. So looking at this snail setup, you'll be able to see that it does have a lid and this is really important that you do have a secure lid because they are escape artists what and if they can get out, they will. So I'm just going to open this for the moment but it is a nice secure lid, it's even got the sides so they can't get out the top. You'll see on the side here that I have a heat mat controlled by a thermostat as well as a uh, thermometer so I can tell what's going on inside the tank with the humidity and the temperature. Coming back inside the enclosure, on the inside I have these sensors and these sensors by being placed right here next to the heat source give me an accurate reading on the outside as to the temperature. My African land snails tend to do best at about 27 degrees Celsius. At night time I lower that down to 20 degrees Celsius. When it comes to decor it's because they like to look after their shell. This snail over here has a very worn shell because okay let me uh first there are some uh, things that are a little bit uh strange for me and that is um this most likely is a snail which i also have it's called ahahatina maginata ovum and it's actually it's i think the biggest land snail on this planet um they need a humidity of 90 percent and um the temperature is not correct for that snail what she has in her enclosure they need a much higher even this is a wild caught one it looks like a wild caught one like mine they need they can need up to 29 uh celsius so a 90 percent humidity i'm not sure how she's gonna how she's gonna uh, uh, um, make sure that the right temperature with this kind of uh, heat mat, it's, it's not enough heat for this kind of snail. So this is not very good, I must, this, my goodness, what's wrong? This thing, this thing for water, I don't know if that's uh, ceramic, or some hard material but if it is it has to go out because any hard material can harm the shell of your snail snails let me let me put it that way are not the most intelligent ones so they will climb up even on the ceiling from your terrarium and they will fall down and if they fall down on this uh, little thing here they might break their shell so everything hard stones um, ceramic uh, everything hard has to go out of your terrarium 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 who are abandoned um, and the other snails had started rasping away on his shell that's why he's got such a damaged shell Delilah on the other hand has a very nice shell and hers is not damaged at all <coughs> so the next thing um, what is not good is that she keeps two different kinds of spe species in one enclosure because they need Diff, they have different needs. So this snail, the small snail right here, I don't know what kind of snail this is, but I don't think it has the same conditions. Uh, it, it needs the same conditions than the the big one here because the big one is the one that needs the most heat and the most humidity of all snails. So this snail, the small snail over here, um, should not be with the big one or the big one should not be with the small one because they're different species and they have different needs so that's also not good to have a uh, different well I'm just gonna pop him down there the other really important thing is to have a water dish snails should have a water bowl available at all times terrestrial or land dwelling snails can drown if the water is too deep so if you're worried so here she even is here she even says if the water is too deep they can drown but on the beginning she puts her snail in 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 water that is way too deep I don't understand this. About drowning your snails, place some clean stones in the water dish to give something for the smaller snails to grip onto. And now she says put some clean stones in the water dish. No, my friends, no stones whatsoever. No stones in your terrarium because they might hurt themselves. No hard objects, no stones in your terrarium. And anyhow, this might be a little bit too small, I see now here, but... 
Looks too small, but I'm not sure. The substrate that I'm using is coconut fiber, which I believe is really the best for snails. And the way that you want to have it is that it's nice and firm when you actually roll it into a ball, but that it also crumbles as well. Um, not correct, not correct again. For the small snail, it might be good that way, but for the big one, uh, for the Achachatina Maginata ovum, it's way too dry. They like it very moisture, the, uh, moisturous, they like it very wet, um, a little bit like, um, I don't know, uh, they like it sw like swampy, you know? Not, if you, if you pick up your soil, and you and you do this water has to come out it should not be crumbling that's way too dry and what else uh, she was saying i don't remember anymore there was something else let me see there was something else what did she say what did she say ah yeah about the water dish um, she says if it's too deep put stones inside just take a water uh, just take a water dish that is flat you don't need something like this you need something that is more flat so it will not be deep anyhow using is coconut yeah, no, fiber which no I believe stones. is really the best for snails and ah yeah she said cocoa fiber okay um, that's a thing where snail owners always have an argument uh, in between because some people say cocoa fiber is very bad for snails because they eat that and they cannot digest that and then they I don't know they maybe die from that or something I never made that experience um, but what I do is I mix cocoa fiber with normal terrarium um, earth together with moss and all that together and also terrarium earth then of course you need calcium carbonate is that the right calcium carbonate of course inside the earth to make it um to to set the right conditions for the snails because in africa where the snail the, is coming from they have a a very uh, a very uh, earth that is full of calcium carbonate and you need to si simulate that because otherwise the shell gets so there's there's that argument between this cocoa fiber or not i just wanted to tell you that you know but i never witnessed any problems with that but still i wouldn't do it 100 percent because it's also not so soft i would mix it always the way that you want to have it is that it's nice and firm when you actually roll it into a Okay, that's not but true for that. You don't want to have wet soil. They often do that um, during the day to be solid. You definitely don't want to have wet soil. Uh, you, definitely, you definitely want wet soil if you have this kind of snail, what she has. Archinata maginata om. I'm going to say it again. They want wet soil. The other one not, but very easy and very cozy for the snails to burrow down into. So if you don't live in a warm environment and you need a heat mat, definitely put a heat mat on the side of the enclosure. You know, you can run it along the back or along the front. That's very true. You have to put it on the side, but not that the soil dries out. Um, the reason for that is in nature that the snails will go underneath the earth if it's for if they want to cool them off themselves, okay? Because it's very hot outside in the African rainforest, and if they want to cool themselves off, or they they uh, will bury themselves under or under the earth. So, um, right, you have to simulate a rainforest in Africa, so that's why you do that on the side, because that's more natural to them. Just put it on the outside, not... And of course they can burn, you know, if it's too hot, if your heat mat is too hot and you put it up. And that's a squirt bottle. So I quite like to squirt on my snails twice a day. So let me just pop that all inside. I quite like to drench them. There we go. And snails love, love, love to be sprayed. Just make sure, of course, that the water's not too hot and not too cold. So room temperature would be the best. 
And there's Delilah making her way into the foliage. Now it's really up to you if you want to keep your snails singularly or with other snails. So I actually have two different species of land snail in here. Okay, now she says um, uh, it's your choice to keep it s them single or in, uh, in company with other snails. I would recommend always to keep them in company because that's also what they do in the wild. They group together, they hang together, they cuddle together. Um, and most people say that they need groups at least three snails in one terrarium and um, that anything else would be animal abuse. But there are some people that say you can have them, you can have only one. But I think I oh, I've only know two people that said that. One is she and the other one uh, is a guy that doesn't even have snails. So I would recommend always to because they they are group animals, you know. Anything else I would consider as animal abuse. Here, and the likelihood is that they're not gonna breed together. So just be aware, if you are going to keep snails of the same species together, the likelihood is that they're going to produce a lot of babies. You can end up with between 100 to 600 within. Okay, there is a lot of things going on. Let me uh, collect my thoughts on this one. She's now saying she has two different kind of species in one enclosure for the reason that they don't breed together. That is not true because they can breed together, but the problem is um, that maybe they will have problems because, like I said, this big snail is the biggest one and they don't lay like 100 or 500 eggs. They lay, lay only max 12 eggs and they are like this size. You see, they're like, small bird eggs so if the if the big one mates with the small one what they most likely will try then when they release the eggs then the the one that releases the eggs will have maybe problems you don't know what's coming out of that that's the problem that's why also people don't usually do that to keep uh, two species in one enclosure what else did she say again? Aha! If you have uh, if you have the same species, they will uh, produce eggs, couple hundred eggs. So for the big snail, that's not true because they can only lay up to, lay up to twelve eggs. So that's not too many. Um, but of course, uh, these African snails. Um, especially Fulika is they can lay up to 400 500 eggs and if you don't if you don't realize you have eggs then very soon you will have <laughs> 400 little tiny snails um, so yes they of course uh, will mate but the thing is what you have to keep in mind they can they uh, why is why are you looking at me like that why are you looking like me like that? Uh, can we switch up to the snail, please? Okay, uh, let's switch up to Shrek. Okay, so the snail can hold sperm inside themselves for years. And if they think the condition is right, they will produce eggs. So you don't know uh, if, if you buy a snail what they did before on the other uh, place where they lived. So they can reproduce anyhow, even if you have only one snail, what would be animal abuse, they can lay even, then they can lay eggs. And some of them, if they're very alone and they want to reproduce, they will just do it themselves. Because they are female and male, they can, in some cir circumstances, they don't like to do that, but they can, um, just reproduce by themselves. They do it themselves. 
Okay, let's see. What's next? Likelihood is that they're not going to breed together. So just be aware if you are going okay, to keep true, snails you that? within your first year, sometimes more if you've got multiple snails. So you want to be very sure of whether or not you want to keep them together. Now the positive of keeping snails together is they do like to follow each other around the tank. I know that sounds strange to people, but they do tend to enjoy other snails' company. Yeah, there she says it. So they're social uh, animals. That That's what you can... Um what you can see and also in the wild so I r recommend always to keep a small group so keeping them together is fantastic fun when you see them zooming all around the inside zoom around so if you do happen to find eggs that you don't want please whatever you do don't put them outside and don't release any snails don't put any eggs outside it's not recommended to do um, if you have an aquarium or a fish tank then fish will very readily take baby snails as well as the eggs um, if not what you can do is you can put them in a, a tupperware container and put them inside your freezer and keep them there for about two weeks and that will stop the eggs from hatching i know not everyone would be happy with the ethics of putting snail eggs um, in the freezer but if you're not happy Happy to do what is necessary to keep your numbers in check that's very true so if you don't want eggs and you don't want a bunch of baby snails um, <clears throat> you 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 need to have the responsibility to somehow yeah let's put it that way <laughs> kill them okay you need either put them in the freezer that's correct some even boil them so it's all up to you but um, of course you cannot uh, keep thousands of snails. Then maybe snails are not for you or maybe you should consider just one snail. That said... Um, and they're a very invasive species. That's why they're also forbidden in a lot of countries. Um, because I think they are on the second place of invasive species the fulica one um because they lay so many eggs and they eat whole you know the farmer is going crazy because they eat all their food and so in places where there is the right condition for the snail to live which is not not germany and not the uk because we have winter but for florida for example it's forbidden i think it's uh, it's even a crime you go for jail you go in jail if you have them so be aware where you live you do you run the risk if you have one shop bought snail that it might have mated at the shop with snails before so you might still get eggs when cleaning your tank, use only warm water to clean it. Never use bleach or other cleaning ingredients. Remove any uneaten food every day or it will rot and it will mold very quickly. Sometimes you might even see little arthropods crawling all over your snail and in the soil. If they're small and white, they're probably slug mites. Don't worry, a few of them won't hurt your snail. Just change out the bedding and soak your snails to keep the mites numbers in check. Soaking snails once a week will help to keep them healthy. When soaking your snails, never leave them unattended and make sure that the water isn't too hot or too cold giant african land snails can eat a whole load of foods they're predominantly what did she just do she just put them in a like in a really deep water when she said you should not do that before i don't understand that why is she doing that she says once a week soaking the snail is good for them what well, well, why and why so deep when you just said before not? I don't understand. Please, uh, can somebody explain me that? Because I don't understand. She just, she just said before not too deep. And now she's she just, she just put them in a very deep water thing. I'm confused. Okay, uh, let me, let me... Uh, you should not do that. You should not, uh, I mean, I don't even understand the word soak your snail. I mean, it's not a towel or anything. You just um, make sure you have a big, uh, not too deep um, something for water where they can bath themselves because you, they don't need you actually they don't need you to soak them and also that that can shock them if that water is too is if the water is too um 
cold for example and you you take him out of the terrarium that's not good they they will be shocked you know they will be scared so don't do that and also i don't know if that's on the daytime right now so he should or the snail should sleep right now so that that would feel like imagine you're sleeping at night and somebody takes you and puts you in a water bin puts you in a in a bucket full of water uh, just throws you in like that i mean that's not healthy and that's not gonna gonna be beneficial for the snail um you just put them in stress like that don't do that they can bath by themselves don't soak them they're not a towel please don't do that <laughs> okay next one the herbivores so you can give them all kinds of fruit and vegetables i have to consult my list over here because i can't remember them all off the top of my head in one go and it saves me editing so some of the foods that shrek likes to eat are bell pepper so that's sweet pepper i think it's also called something else around the world but sweet pepper bell pepper banana if you're gonna feed banana they actually prefer banana that's been left out for a day or so so uh, this um this kind of snail likes their food like two days old not rotten but like two days old they like it stinky you know they live under earth most of the time they like it rotten and stinky and wet you know what i mean they're dirty animals so they're dirty animals so you can leave that for two days in their enclosure but don't let it rot too much so mushy banana lettuce spring greens carrot sweet potato they love sweet potato peas watercress cucumber those are just some of the foods which are good for them oh an apple of course with any food that you feed your snail make sure that you wash it thoroughly first because you don't know if it might have been exposed to any pesticides or any kind of contamination even though i know i buy organic i still make sure that i take off the first couple of leaves around a lettuce because those ones are the most likely I don't know. I mean, this kind of snail doesn't even eat a d diet for them that is th that where they can get all their vitamins from. Lettuce will not do the job. So they also eat. Um, actually, they also eat meat. They eat um, this food for fishes. They need protein. They also need animal protein once in a while. Cooked eggs, for example, they love and. Um, they also li love this little shrimps. So they also need animal proteins. Keep that in mind. And of course, everything what comes from Africa, like um, banana or sweet potato, uh, banana leaves also. Everything, they, they like everything what is exotic. This kind of snail. They don't like cucumber, but Fulica loves cu cucumber. So it very depends what kind of snail you have. Because, and they're, the, I don't know exactly the number, but I, I think it's over 100,000 different species of snails. So they're all different. They all have different needs. You have to know exactly what kind of species you have. That's very important to care of them. Need to have contamination. So giving them mostly inside leaves. I eat the outside ones because hey, who cares if I get contaminated as long as Shrek's okay. <laughs> Rather than a traditional mouth, mm -hmm. mollusks have a tongue-like area under their head called a radula. The radula has tiny teeth-like ridges which the snail will use to scrape against food. It feels a bit like a mini cat tongue. If you feed your snails when <clears> it's very quiet, you'll even hear the rasping of the radula against the food. Listen here as Delilah scrapes away at some cuttlefish. Okay, we know so that. nothing like orange or grapefruit, they're not going to enjoy those. Also, they do not like onion. So please, as with a lot of animals, no onion for these guys. They won't thank you for it. It, it could really damage their skin. Please don't feed anything great. I hope that you enjoyed this care video. And get back to every comment as much as possible. Follow me on my other social media. Come mm -hmm. find me. Okay, I just wanted to say, like, everybody makes mistakes. That's normal, especially for beginners. But... I just wanted to react on this video also because it has like 500,000 views and just to make sure somehow that people don't follow her rules because they're not true and and um, because they also maybe you 
and maybe she she changed some stuff a little bit. That would be nice, of course. But anyways, I hope I could help some of you. I hope you understand me. And <laughs> and if you don't like that I'm talking English now, slime side, then leave a comment below and say, no more English, please. We want the German back. No problem. I just, I just hope maybe she sees the video and then she realizes, oh, I made some mistakes. Let's update the enclosure. Let's update uh, some some things, and that would be nice. I would find it nice, and that's it. Everything for the snails, you know. If you like the video, just press like, and if you want to see more of the slime side, then subscribe my channel. There will be much more to come, and also my single. We will be coming on the nineteenth of eleven. So that's it. Have fun, everybody, and adios. Ah, what I want to say. This time, 